and welcome. Thank you for staying connected in our new series, Sharing Our Stories. So wonderful to hear the inspirational stories told by our brothers and sisters in our parish community. Thank you to all who have been so open and willing to share your experiences during these difficult times. We hope to have many more come forward. The Lord is really working in our lives and it is such a gift to hear how he is moving in our lives and blessing us during this pandemic. All of our videos are available on our St. Paul YouTube channel. Check them out. You don't want to miss any of them. When you subscribe to our channel, you can opt to get notifications each time we upload a new video. Today we'll hear from Cecilia and Larry who have Help develop an extraordinary ministry of giving to those in need with our table of plenty, serving people in our parish and out in the broader community. Their work in this area has given them a better sense of seeing the face of God in every person they meet. It has stretched them beyond their own comfort zone and has provided them a vehicle to answer God's call to love and serve others. Listen to their story now. Hello, everyone. Um, before COVID-19, I'm sure you're all aware and have seen the food pantry baskets that we kept at the end of the hallways in church. We always kept a small supply of food there to hand out to anybody passing by that needed assistance. That was very rarely at that time. But once COVID-19 hit, we began to receive numerous phone calls requesting assistance for food, for gas money, uh, to get to doctors, and, and just different things like that. And so our table of plenty idea grew from that, and we were able to ask our parents to help us with donations of money and food, and we have been very successful in feeding quite a few people with your generosity and with your compassionate hearts. We started out helping Canton and Gluckstadt after the ice crisis. Um, husbands and wives were separated. Wives had ankle bands on. Um, it, it, was, it was just total chaos up there. They weren't able to shop for themselves and leave home. So we started delivering food to Canton, which was distributed to these families. Um, that grew into a bigger project. Um, we had quite a few people coming by that were homeless, that we were helping. We asked the parish to help us with small sizes of shampoos and just general help-ish items, and those were supplied in bulk. Then we found out that there was another church affected by the ice crisis that um, Larry and the Knights had been helping quite a bit, and so we asked Larry if we could be a have food assistance with him to St. Michael's in Forest and Morton. So I'll let Larry tell you about that. Yes, well, every every Tuesday we start taking food over there to, to Forest and they share it with their fellow church in Morton. And it's about 25 to 30 families that we've been helping out every every two weeks. And it is it means so much to them because they like I said, they cannot get out there. They don't have an opportunity like we do to go get food all the time. And, and, and with, the, with the mother being with an ankle bracelet on, not able to get out, and the daddy's all being in jail, the children are left behind. And, and this helps the children out. I mean, it helps the parents out. But, you know, we all know that, you know, the children are the, the ones that need it the most, you know. And in, uh, in this last time we went over, we took them some jackets for the, for the kids, and they called up and asked for some backpacks. Well, one of our fellow parishioners here at St. Paul's, I talked to him, and he was able to get Walmart to supply 28 backpacks. You know, we only need 15. And, uh, and they, they really are... In demand, they really for and it, this helps the food that we give. They they separate, they give to their people. We and Doug and has been getting bikes, and 
me and Doug were taking bikes over there to them and clothes, and they sell those and help subside, take care of their church. Their, their weekly offertory over there is like $300. And, and that's very, very, that's not enough to keep the church surviving. There, you know, there's so much needing to be done over there. And, uh, and they share that with Morton with a little bit of money because Morton was getting pretty bad over there too. We carried a, a, a professional cross and chalice over there to them because they did not even have that over there at Morton. And, uh, and they, we were there, Jose Lopez and myself and another couple nights and there were four baptisms going on this at that time and and none of their daddies were there to see the children get baptized and uh, but they are very very needy very happy with what they we get them they smile all the time this last week we go over there Fred Ceramic said he's going to donate his hot dog stand to them and they can cook hot dogs in there and make a little bit of money, you know. And, and he said, Well, they can even put their tamales in there to keep them warm. So, we have had a lot of spin off programs from the Table of Plenty, and during late summer, we began a school supply collection for the meteor schools in the Rankin County School District. And of course, we included St. Michael's in that collection too. So we were able to send supplies for uh, McLaurin and, and Puahatchee and for St. Michael's Parish for those children to begin school. We had previously sent quite a few book bags there and had given them some money cards to actually purchase what they needed. We did the same thing for Puahatchee. Um, we also have another uh, program that was in place in a much smaller way called Feed the Flock. And that was a program that where we fed the homebound of our parents who were unable to get out or do anything, maybe under chemo or just not, or, or elderly. And from that, once COVID and shelter in place happened, we began to cook weekly two meals per individual and deliver those to those people. Um, we also have uh, Eucharistic ministers or homebound ministers that deliver communion and pray with certain ones of them that are not at risk. We don't enter the home of at-risk people. Um, we There's just so much good that has come out of just having those food pantry baskets in church and expanding the growth of that program, 99% of all monies and food that we have collected go to complete strangers outside of our, our parish. And I feel like it's given our parish and our, our brothers and sisters here an opportunity to actually put their faith in action. They are very generous. I, I'll tell you, I've cried when people bring things here people's hearts have been open and I truly believe that they see the face of Jesus in the people that they're helping. And I hope that the people we're helping see the face of Jesus in us. In our backpack ministry that we do at Bucket too, we take care of what 20, 25, no, 48, the 48 children take backpacks over there on Thursdays. And that's all generous people donating money, helping out. A lot of people that are donating things to us to, to help us out. You know, Michelle and Tom Thomas Harris from the Rosie's Gardens is giving us perishable food. It's that when it's in season, it right now it's getting kind of in season. St. Peter's on the Reservoir on the spillway is donating a lot, a lot of their food that they have excess of to help us out too. And just it's just amazing how much we are grateful to both of those, those people.
the NES changed me. They just to look at people all the same, you know, that that were all God's children. Just open up his arms, open to everybody, trying to gather his flock in. I think there are a lot of things that have impressed me and touched my heart about the giving from this parish. And one that I really did cry about was an envelope that I received that contained $1,000 in $25 Kroger cards. Because every person that comes to us for help, every family, depending on the size, gets a cash card to buy perishable food that we can't keep here. Um, another thing that we do is to pray over every family, whether they pick up the food in person from us, we as a staff will pray with them, or if I'm leaving a, their package to be picked up, I pray over their food as I package for them. You know, St. Teresa of Calcutta always said that Jesus is present in this world in two ways, one in the Eucharist, and the other in the poor and the needy, and she always called them Jesus in disguise. So I think this program has helped me to look at people and to see Christ in them and not to judge them for where circumstances have landed them in life or how they got there, whether it was poor decisions or whether they were laid off from their job. But I think our, our duty and our obligation is to give from the heart and how they receive that gift from us is between them and God. And I encourage everyone to don't make it political. Think about children. I have never in my life gone to bed hungry. I can't imagine, and it breaks my heart to think, that living right at our back door, front door, and beside us are children that go to school with your children and my grandkids who are hungry. So anybody that comes to our doors and requests assistance for food, we're here to help them. God bless you all, and thank you for your generosity and your kindness, and especially your compassion to towards those in need. Thank you, Cecilia and Larry, and all others who have helped by donating, shopping, and packing items. Thank you to our brother, Knights of Columbus, St. Peter's Church by the Lake, Walmart, Rosie's Garden, and others in the community who are coming together to help and are united in this effort to come to the aid of people who are truly in great need. I would love to hear from more of you. Everyone has a unique story to tell. It could be some small change of heart you've had or that you've experienced or some way you have grown and developed during this challenging time, or some way others have helped you during this time. Let us share your story also. And please continue to pray daily for our parish and for our commitment to do our part in bringing healing to our hurting world. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you.